this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make my version of the African flower and how to take that African flower and join it to other ones and make this beautiful scarf and you can use whatever colors that you want to we're using worsted weight most of the ones I have on hand and I'm doing this with my leftover scraps, just my leftover balls of yarn. And I did a whole bunch of colors, all different colors and shades. And um, you can see it, it was just so much fun. And I made a whole bunch of these. And I'm going to show you how to make the African flower, how to join it to another one and how to add this fringe and make this fun scarf. Now, uh, like I said, this is a free pattern on my blog, and I'll put that on there. I have two blogs. One has the pattern, how to make the African flower on it, and the other one will have how to um, join and into a scarf and add the fringe. But I'm gonna put it all into one video so that you can do all of it. You can make the African flower and do whatever you want with it, or you can make a fun scarf and and um, just have some fun with it. So we're going to be using worsted weight yarn today and I'm going to be using these colors, I've got a yellow over here too, to make my African flower hexagon. And then you're going to need an H hook. You'll need your tape measure because we'll need to measure 10 inches when we go to cut our fringe. You're going to need a needle, make sure it has a nice big eye, and you're going to need your scissors. And uh, one thing to remember, I'm using all worsted weight number four yarn. Some are Red Heart, some are I Love This Yarn, some are some I just had in my stash and I don't know what they are. <laughs> I Just some I had. And so, um, but you can uh, use whatever you want. Now, if you decide to use thicker or lighter yarn, make sure you use the same kind of yarn through your whole project as far as your weight um, of your yarn. All right, let's get started. Move these out of the way there. All right, we're going to begin, of course, with the center. We're going to chain five. So make our slip stitch and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna make that into a circle. So we're gonna take the tail of our yarn and we're gonna put it through that loop and snug that up. And then I always like to just put another little extra little light tie in there just so it stays put. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned. And we're going to be uh, crocheting over our tail as well. So we've got our circle. We're going to be stitching in the circle. So we're going to pull up a loop and we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And now we're going to chain, not chain. <laughs> We're going to stitch 11 more double crochets in this circle. And we're going to make sure that we stitch over this tail. So I'm just going to hold them together and we're going to stitch 11 more double crochets around this circle, stitching through the circle and make sure we're stitching across the tail and it just holds it down. And I'll show you a trick as to why we're doing that when we get all 11 plus our chain three for a total of 12 double crochets for our center. Alrighty. Let's see how many I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Now we're going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch. And we're going to cut that. And I always leave a little bit of a tail so I have plenty so I because we're going to have to weave in a lot of ends because we're changing colors almost every row. Okay, now before we get started on our next row, I want you to see the back. We've stitched with this tail around and all we have to do to close that hole up is just gently pull that tail and see that hole closed right up. And if it's not as tight as you want, just give it a little bit more of a snug and there you go. 
that's nice and closed. That was the trick. If you, if you stitch a chain two or you start with a circle, if you stitch over the tail, then all you have to do is pull that tail and it closes that circle right up so you don't have a hole. All right, let's do row two. For row two, I'm gonna use the brown. So we're gonna join our brown on. And now we're gonna go between those first two stitches and chain three. And then we're going to chain another double crochet because our, oops, slid right off my hook. There we go. Oh, missed a loop. There we go. <laughs> All right, we're going to stitch a double crochet in that same stitch as our chain three. Then we're going to chain two. And we're going to stitch two more double crochets in that same place. Okay. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches and we're going to repeat that. We're going to stitch two double crochets. chain two and two double crochets. And we're going to repeat this all the way around and we're going to have six sets of two double crochet, chain two, two double crochets. So now we've done one, two, three, four, five, six sets of two double crochet, chain two, two double crochets around. And we're going to join to the top of that chain three. And then we're going to slip stitch in that next stitch just to get us to this chain two space. Now we're going to go in the chain two space and chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to stitch six more double crochets because this first chain three counts as our first double crochet. So we're going to chain, si chain, we're going to stitch six double crochets in this chain two space, which will give us a total of seven double crochets. And this is forming the petal of our African flower. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then after we get our first seven done, we're going to chain two. One, two. And then we're going to put seven double crochets in each one of these corners to make six petals for our African flower. So let's put six double crochets in the next chain two space. Four, five, six, seven. Let me count, make sure. One, two, three, four, five. Let me start over, I counted too fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did one too many. All right, so we did seven double crochets. We're going to chain two. And then we're going to put seven double crochets in the next one. And we will continue this pattern all the way around till we get back to our first chain three. So you can see I've done six sets of seven double crochet, chain two, all the way around. And now I'm going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch. Snug that down a little bit. And then I'm going to change to my next color. And this next row, I'm going to use this bright pink. And what we're going to do we're going to join our color in and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a half double crochet in this chain first chain two space so we'll just go ahead and make your half double crochet and then we're going to put one single crochet in each of the seven double crochets 
There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now that we're back at this chain, at this next chain two space, we're going to make another half double crochet. We're just putting one, and then we're going to put one single crochet in each of the seven double crochets. And we'll do this all the way around. One single crochet in the seven, half double crochet. One single crochet in each of the seven, half double crochet. And we'll do this all the way around till we get back over here. So we added this row. And we're going to join our last single crochet to our half double crochet that we started with with a slip stitch. And now we're going to tie off. All right, not tie off, cut off. The next row I'm going to add is I'm going to add this bright yellow color. And for our next row, There we go. Chain three, one, two, three. And now we're going to double crochet in the next one, two, three, four stitches. And then in the fifth stitch, we're going to make a V stitch. And that's going to help us get those corners. And it's real important when you do your V stitch, because we have seven stitches in each of the petals, and it's real important that you put that V stitch in the very center stitch so that it's centered off of each flower. Whoops, skipped a stitch there by accident. So we'll make our double crochets. Here's our center. So in that center stitch, we're going to stitch a double crochet, chain two, or is it chain one? Let me check my notes, make sure we get enough space in there. All right, it's chain one. There we go. So we're double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And that's going to make the first corner. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We need to make sure that our V-stitch is lined up right in the center of each of those flower petals because that's what gets our hexagon shape. So now we're going to double crochet to the next center, I think it's seven stitches. And I always check to make sure I'm on that center stitch. And then I make my V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And you'll continue to do that all the way around. You should have your V stitch and then seven stitches in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then your next V stitch. And you'll do that all the way around till we reach back around here. Now you can see that the hexagon is really is really formed. We're going to go ahead and cut that. Join that to the top of the chain 3. There's seven stitches in between with a V stitch and it, like I said it's real important that you center that V stitch on the center stitch of the petal in order for it to lay right. The last row is just like this row. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one since it already has the last row on it. 
and it's done exactly the same. The only difference is you're doing nine stitches in between, and then you put your V stitch in the V stitch of the previous row. So you uh, stitch across, put a V stitch in the same V stitch, one double crochet in each of the double crochets, which gives you nine. So, and then that's, and then you, of course, you join to the top of your chain three, and that's the end of how I make my version of a African flower hexagon. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to join them together. And I'm going to use this one since this is the scarf that I'm working on. I already have the fringe on this other end, and I'm going to show you how to add another hexagon on. And I, what I want to show you first is on the end of the hexagon is a flat edge, and you can see that there's the braid or the tops of the stitches, and there's two loops. And it's real important to know that. And so you're going to put one hexagon on top of the other one with the wrong sides facing out, like that. And then we're going to take some yarn. Try to match your yarn. I'm going to use this ivory. And the, what we're going to do is we're only going to be stitching from this corner to this corner on both of them together. And we're going to be using the outside loops of both sides so that it lays pretty on the front. So let's go in this first outside loop right here. There's the inside loop. And then we're going to go across and use the outside loop of the other hexagon. And we'll bring our yarn in and make a slip stitch. One other piece to weave in, of course. This You have lots of weaving in on this. And then we're just going to go on the outside of the loops, grabbing those outside loops on both sides and slip stitching them together. Now there are other techniques of making African flowers. There are other techniques of joining them. This is just what I've learned works best for me. One thing to remember is don't pull too tight on when you're slip stitching these together or it'll be all puckered up. You want to stitch this just a little bit loose so there's a little bit play, a little bit of play in the stitch. You don't want it too loopy where it hangs, but also you want it not to, to uh, pull and pucker up on you. You can see I'm just going through the outside stitches of both sides, slip stitching across to the next. It's real important you remember that you get it lined up real good too because when I was putting this one together, I accidentally stitched one going this direction. It was not pretty. <laughs> All right, so that's the last one. We're going to cut that, leave them some room for weaving in. I'm going to show you how I weave this in real quick just because... To me, I, I did this as I went along. And I have those two ends. And I went back through the stitch. And I went forward a few stitches. This one's a little shorter. Let me show you with this longer one. I should have left a longer one on that one. But what I do is I go back the way that I came, kind of going through a couple of stitches. And then I'll make like a loop back that way and then I'll come this way and stitch it this way. And I think that holds the best. I'm going to clip those. And I went ahead on each one of these and I worked it in as I went. And then when you flip it over you can see that the inside loops are where you stitched and so it lays nice and pretty up against those um, in, actually we stitched the outside loops and it lays nice and pretty you can see on all of these, that's the way I did them. So it lays nice and pretty on the seams. Okay, so that's how we hooked it together. We hooked them all together in a row. And I'm going to show you how to do the fringe. And I just took all different colors because I made a crazy scarf with all different colors. I do think this would be lovely and like a solid cream. All right, so we're going to take our all our different colors of yarn. We'll just use these for now. And what I do is I lay my tape measure out. And I only wanted 10 inch, maybe, maybe 10, 11 inch fringes. And so I just took my yarn 
ends. Trying to line them up. And I did them like that. Get some more. My, my yellow yarn has a knot. All right. Wanted to get some more color in here. We can do it like this. And I just cut a whole bunch of them like that. And all different colors. And then each one of my fringes is three layers of yarn. So let's get the other end here where we stitched. Where'd you go? All right. So here's our end where we did our last one. And I'm gonna grab three colors. And I don't care that they don't match because I've got all different colors in my scarf. But you can use whatever colors that you're using for your scarf. And then I took the three. And I started right over here with my hook. Put my hook through, grab those loops and pull them through, make a nice big loop there. Wrap the tails around my hook and just loop them through. And I did that all the way across, putting three strands of yarn in each one. And that's how I ended up with such a nice full fringe, even though the end of my scarf isn't very wide. Put three at a time. There we go, for our fringe. Let me show you the other end. Isn't that pretty? And that's how you make my version of the African flower hexagon, how to join them together into a scarf, and how to make the fringe. Now be sure when you're all done that you trim that fringe. I kind of like mine not perfect, and so I didn't, uh, trim them real close, but if you're a perfectionist, like say my daughter, <laughs> she would cut them all nice and even and straight. So anyway, that's how you make this fun scarf and the fun hexagons. And you know, there are tons of things you can do with these. And I hope to be able to come up with some more ideas, maybe a bag or something in the future. Well, have fun with this pattern.